Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very cool Bigfoot encounter that happened back in August of 1977 in Montana. It happened to a guy who was out fly fishing, and uh, he had one of these Sasquatch creatures approach the area he was in and actually take some of the fish that he had caught. Before we get into that, I want to say that tomorrow night I'm going to be on Doug Highcheck's um, podcast, uh, Untold Radio AM at 6.30 Mountain Time. Um, so be sure to check that out. You'll be able to look it up on YouTube. And um, it's gonna be a great show. Doug is the producer of the TV show Monster Quest that aired on History Channel. You know, one of the best Bigfoot shows ever created. Uh, I used to watch it a lot when I was in high school. And you know, there's still nothing else like it. It really takes the subject seriously. And um, yeah, it's just a great show. Uh, Doug's a great guy and I'm looking forward to talking to him on his podcast so be sure to check that out so the idea of a fisherman in this instance a fly fisherman um you know having a bigfoot encounter is not something that we don't hear of very often um, my dad's encounter um suspected bigfoot encounter i say that because he didn't actually see the creature but he had you know large rocks thrown in close proximity to him um, he was out on a remote lake on vancouver island fishing and um you know he was just in the right place at the right time. And, uh, you know, I do suspect that maybe these creatures were observing them, you know, the moment they showed up in that area. And I feel like in this story that I'm about to go over, there's a very good chance that, you know, this guy was probably being watched and observed uh, from the shadows and from the darkness. Um, from the moment he got there, this guy's fishing late into the night. Uh, essentially the perfect setup for something to be you know spying on you because you know they have the cover of darkness and i feel like these creatures probably move around quite a bit at night because it's easy to conceal themselves and um you know this guy's fishing he has fish that he had already caught and this creature comes in and you know sees a great opportunity to get an easy meal but anyways i'll go over the encounter here for you guys I had hiked downstream on the Missouri River from Hauser Dam for an evening of fly fishing for rainbow trout. This was during August of 1977. As usual, I kept fishing until well after dark, about 11pm. There was no moonlight and it was so dark I could only see a few feet in front of me. I had a large flashlight with me which I had laid on a large boulder with my fly box. Just below the boulder, I placed some rocks in a circle near the river's edge to put my trout so they would keep fresh. I was fishing about 20 yards upstream of the boulder that held my lamp when I suddenly realized that I had lost my fly. I proceeded back towards the boulder to put on another fly. As I approached the boulder, I could see some kind of movement, but it was too dark to make out what it was. When I reached the boulder, I switched on my lamp with the beam pointing above the boulder towards some brush up on the steep embankment. I was startled to hear a crackling sound and see movement from the brush. I pointed the beam directly at the movement only 10 feet from me and got a full view of a hairy bipedal creature moving very rapidly up the bank and quartering away from me in the downstream direction. It was very large and muscular with long dark hair and seemingly no neck. Estimated height is about 7 to 8 feet and I'm guessing 400 to 500 pounds. I could not see its face and it was moving away from me. It took long powerful strides and its arms moved powerfully as a man would walking very rapidly. It was amazing to see how quickly it traversed over the boulders and up the steep embankment. I had the creature in the light beam for only a few seconds before it disappeared into the darkness. I was stunned at what I had just seen and tried to rationalize what it could have been. For some strange reason I felt absolutely no fear. The sense I had was that this was an animal of some sort and it was frightened away by my light and posed no threat to me. However, however that changed somewhat when I shined the lamp towards the rock pool where I had been keeping my trout. Before sighting the creature, I had four trout ranging from two to three pounds in the pool. After the sighting, there were only two trout. This explained the movement I detected as I was approaching the boulder. The creature must have been innocently forging along the river's edge and found an easy meal. What caused me some concern was that the creature might come back and fight for the remaining two fish. 
Then I heard a boulder crashing down the hillside, probably several hundred yards down the river. I therefore felt some comfort that the creature was still running away from me. At that point, I picked up the two remaining trout and hiked back up to the Hawser Dam and crossed the river to my vehicle and went home. I have only told the story to my wife, a couple close friends, and to a bona fide researcher in Helena. I went back the following day and found no tracks because of the rocks and boulders, no other signs at all. So there it is, a really great Sasquatch encounter. This guy was extremely close to it. You know, he says he pointed his light at the movement that was only 10 feet away from him, and he got a full view of the creature, you know, moving quickly up the bank and away from him. And, you know, he, he's really close to it, so it's easy to get a decent estimate as to, like, the height of the creature. Um, I suspect his weight estimate is probably off. He says around 400 to 500 pounds, but, you know, it's probably a bit heavier than that. But it didn't make any vocalizations or anything. He doesn't report a strange smell. Um, but this creature probably didn't expect this guy to head back to where the fish were and to where his fly box was. You know, he had lost his fly, and that's the reason why he went back in that direction. And, you know, if he didn't lose his fly, he wouldn't have done that. But this creature probably didn't expect that and was caught by surprise. And I'm guessing that the sound of the water and the river kind of masked this guy's, uh, like, sound signature as he's moving back towards the boulder where the fish are. You know, otherwise the Bigfoot would have heard him if there wasn't any river there. Um, or, or the sound of water. So he caught this creature by surprise. He shines the light on it. It takes off. And, um, you know, that's that. It took two of the fish that were, uh, you know, sitting in that circle of rocks that he made. Um, I'm guessing he probably just had one fish in each hand and he took off. But, um, you know, very interesting. This guy's scared. He's worried that the creature's going to come back and, and take more of the fish. But at this point, I don't know, like the creature is probably so startled that it doesn't want to come back. It knows it's been seen. It's probably just going to take off and leave the scene for good. And it, it appears that's exactly what happened. So it, the creature never came back. And, uh, you know, this guy hiked back out and that was it. He didn't see the creature again. But this is like one of those things, you know, the, this guy's out by himself in the night minding his own business he's not acting suspicious he's just doing something that i'm sure these creatures have observed people doing many times before which is just fishing you know people have been fishing for a long time and uh, you know he wasn't really paying attention to his surroundings he was just trying to catch fish and uh, this creature probably thought the guy was distracted doing what he was doing and thought he could you know move in and uh, grab the fish and, you know, it didn't work out the way he wanted it to. He, he got caught. So that might be one thing you could do if you're going out into the wilderness with hopes of seeing a Sasquatch, is to just stick to things that normal people do. Don't go out, you know, actually looking for Bigfoot. But have Bigfoot on your mind, and, you know, you can have the desire to see one. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just stick to activities that are just normal. You're going hiking, you're going camping... You know, you're roasting hot dogs and marshmallows and just, you know, keep it relatively chill and don't go crazy with the Bigfoot research thing. Go fishing, you know, do things like that. And um, these creatures might just think you're an unsuspecting person, you know, you're just totally oblivious to them being around you. Um, you're not there to harm them. And uh, they might come around and they might watch you. And I bet you 90% of the time, you're, maybe even 99% of the time, you're not going to know that they were there, especially at night. They might just wait and hide just out of sight, you know, in the darkness, and they might watch you. I bet you they do this more often than not. You know, you could be out camping in the remote wilderness and not even know you were in close proximity to one of these creatures. Um... This guy was just lucky, you know, he was lucky he lost his fly and he had to go back to get a new one. Ended up, you know, running into one of these creatures and getting a good look at it. So, I think this is a very interesting encounter. I, I like it when these people have very close encounters like this. And it's cool because this guy didn't feel any threat from the creature. He was actually kind of relaxed and just got the impression that it was, you know, an animal of some kind. He didn't get... Uh, 
that feeling of fear, intense fear that a lot of people report. I don't know if that feeling um, is an actual like thing that the Sasquatch is doing. You hear of zapping or people feeling this intense fear and they think it's coming from the Sasquatch and it's hitting you, you know, like it's hitting them. Um, I think people are just feeling an intense fear most of the time because, you know, they're in the wilderness alone, they're freaked out, and of course they're going to panic and, and get scared and the, the fear will be intense because you're in such a, you know, strange scenario encountering one of these things, something that you've never experienced before. It's going to be a really intense fear. And I think most of the time that's what these people are, are feeling when they're reporting this intense fear and dread. It's just that, you know, they're not used to it. So this is an outdoorsman, you know, he's probably spent a lot of time in the bush and um, he just thought it was an animal. He didn't feel, you know, any threat. You know, even being alone in the dark, which is pretty impressive, so... I don't know, I, I think it's a great encounter. It happened way back in the day, in the 70s, you know. This topic, the topic of Bigfoot, was quite popular back then. I guess it is possible, even, that that this creature in this story was, a, you know, a, a bear. Could have been a bear, it was in the dark. And he didn't see the front of the creature, he didn't see the face, but, you know... He was 10 feet away from it, so I guess, you know, let's be real here. He was 10 feet away from it, and it walked up the bank. Probably pretty easy to see if it was a bipedal creature, and to see if it was a bear. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Do you think this is legitimate? Do you think it's a misidentification? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to check out Doug Hychek's podcast tomorrow night at 6.30 Mountain Time. Uh, Untold Radio AM, I'm going to be on there. It's going to be a really good show. Thanks for watching this video, guys. We'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries.